All of the specimens that we will be unboxing today are colored by iron. Ooh. But they all have different colors. Oh, one of my favorites. Oh, good. Garnet. Are those magnets? Yeah. I love so it. A lot of the times, trace elements that color gemstones and minerals will color like in a similar way. They'll all color blue or they'll all, all color tend to color green. But iron has a surprising amount of variety of colors that it can produce in gemstones for, through one means or another. I love it. I love color. I love light. So this is garnet. This is almondine garnet. Uh huh. So an iron rich yeah. variety. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bit of a parcel of some different ones. We've got reds, yellows, and purples here primarily. A little bit of orange action, some big, some small. And then there we've got a little rough almondine. Almondine garnet is part of the bigger garnet group, yep. which is an isomorphous group, meaning elemental replacement in the chemical structure. Almondine is an iron aluminum silicate. Iron is obviously a metal. It can show magnetic properties. You want to show it? Yes. So we've got three moderately strong magnets here. So the darker the garnet, the more iron content. So if you slowly kind of hold it there. Ah, see it pull? Yeah, it won't quite lift up a garnet, but you can certainly drag it across the oh, table. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really cool. So that's just proof of concept that there's iron in these uh, gemstones. Let's do it with these. Okay, yeah. So this parcel has a few different varieties. It looks like, based off the color, you have some pyrobe almondine, some almondine, maybe some pyrobe, spessartine, that's the orangey type. Mm -hmm. I wanna test a theory here. Spessartine. The orange. The orange is typically the most magnetic. And so when you rub the magnet over it, you can see. Oh, wow, yep, primarily. <laughs> they're all clinging. So you can see that iron colors different gems in different ways. Hmm. So one of the most popular types of cause of coloration in gemstones is by dispersed metal ions. So, you know, iron two, iron three, chromium two, manganese, three plus, a whole variety of elements that carry an ionic charge. And what happens here is they interact in different crystal structures in different ways. And so that means an iron in an almondine garnet is gonna interact in that garnet structure to cause red, whereas in a barrel might interact in that structure to cause a blue. And so in this case, you've got oranges, you have reds, you have purples, and that's from iron, but also some other elements that are contributing to the color. By and large, a dark red almondine garnet is going to be caused by ferrous iron, so iron with a two plus charge. That's the start. Do you want to see some of the other colors? Sure. I can tell it's heavy. Ooh, Ooh. dark and stormy. Oh, we're getting edgy. Here. I love this piece. Good. This is shoral. Shoral is. Uh, this looks like uh, hematite. That's right. Yeah, that's correct. I am totally attracted to the luster of it. Oh, it's, it's so it's pretty. super metallic. It is a really nice piece. Mm -hmm. um, it's stunning. It's very striking. Great crystal structure there. How do you know, like right on site, that that is tourmaline, specifically shoral? So tourmaline is in the trigonal crystal system. And as you can see, it often forms in triangular prisms and it has this triangular termination at the end. And so you have this really clear picture of that here. It also often has vertical striations along the prism faces. Mm -hmm. And so you have those nice clean consecutive lines there. I know whenever I see that sort of rounded triangle, with the striations, I know immediately, regardless of the color, that I'm looking at a tourmaline. So shoral is one of the most common varieties of tourmaline, but it doesn't often get faceted nearly as much as its other colored varieties because of the nature of its color. There are some estimates that it makes up 95% of all the tourmaline found in nature. So if you've ever heard of tourmalinated quartz, it's likely inclusions of shoral, needle-like inclusions of black tourmaline or shoral in that quartz. Mm -hmm. But we also have hematite here. That's correct. And one of my favorite facts about hematite is, you know, it's 
metallic. It has this beautiful metallic luster. It's this silvery color, but actually hematite is truly red. And hematite is also colored by iron. A great way to test this is with a streak test. Oy. And so if you struck hematite against an unglazed like porcelain plate, it would streak red, which helps differentiate it from other imitations or simulants. But so the iron causes that. And it's super hefty. Yes. It's one yes, of the it heftier it's stones. It's obviously metallic. Metals are often high in heft. The hematite is an iron oxide. It's idiochromatic, mm -hmm. meaning the coloring agent is part of its essential composition. So whereas iron two creates the black for shoral, iron three creates the hematite color, that red and the metallic. Um, hematite is Fe2O3, so iron with a three plus charge or ferric iron. Are you ready for the next box? I am, are you? Okay. I'm ready. Okay, good. <gasps> Ooh, a nice olive green color. Oh my gosh, this is spiky. It is, epidote. It's epidote. Yeah. I wanna talk first about the rough and the faceted piece. Peridot is in the olivine group. Peridot is one of my favorite stones to test for a lot of reasons. It's in the orthorhombic crystal system. It's super highly doubly refractive. So it has this nice doubling effect when you view it. It has an interesting spectrum, it has really cool inclusions, namely lily pads. Also, it's one of the few gems that was formed in the mantle of the earth. Yeah. So most other gems are formed in the crust. Um, diamond is formed in the mantle, as is peridot. So it has, you know, a little bit deeper and richer of a coming a of age uh, <laughs> story. Peridot is like this yellowish green, green gemstone, primarily found in China, Arizona, a few key localities throughout the world, but it gets its color from iron. And one That's of my right. favorite tests is the spectroscope. And this allows you to see the patterns of absorption and transmission in a gemstone. And Peridot has a very, very diagnostic spectrum. It has three strong bands in the violet, blue, violet section of the spectrum. And so that is a great way to identify peridot. Peridot is a magnesium iron silicate. It's an idiochromatic gemstone, mm -hmm. meaning its cause of color is in its base chemical composition. So it, the iron. So peridot will always be a shade of green. It will always be a shade of green, that's right. And the shade of green is impacted by the amount of iron, which is often the case when it comes to colors caused by dispersed metal ions. The concentration of those ions and the relative balance compared to other elements indicates the color. So Arizona is the major source of peridot today, but that wasn't always the case. It can be found in other places. Yeah, Myanmar, Pakistan, China, Tanzania, and Vietnam are the other main localities throughout the world. So epidote is in the monoclinic crystal system, which is one of the more complex crystal systems. One of my favorite parts about this piece is how clear those crystal forms are. It has that nice, rich, <coughs> olivey green color. Yeah, one it's of my so dark, in fact, that it, it, it almost looks black, some of these crystals. It does. And one of my favorite features of this is how clearly defined the crystal forms are. Mm -hmm. If you look at monoclinic crystals, it kind of looks like a twisted rectangle almost. Down the length of the crystal, you can see almost this diamond shape that is common in the monoclinic crystal system. It has a hardness of like six to seven. Mm -hmm. Epidote is colored mostly by iron, but it's also colored by manganese. While this is an episode about gems colored by iron, we do have to mention that- It's a, a team effort. It is there. a team effort in so many gemstones. There are so many different combinations that cause certain colors. Manganese has a part to play when it comes to epidote. Mm -hmm. I can't pretend that I have this memorized, but do you want to hear the chemical composition of it? Yes. Ca2Al2Fe3 plus AlSiO4Si2O7OOH. Close parentheses. <laughs> So again, we've talked about ferrous, so iron two plus and ferric iron three plus. Epidote is caused by ferric iron or iron with a three plus charge. Mm -hmm. Epidote, as it turns out, is actually 
pretty pleochroic, but these stones are so saturated that I wasn't really able to spot it. Very cool specimen, I really like that. Yeah. All right, we got another box. Another box, another color. You open. Okay. <gasps> now this is, you know. That's a good one. What you may have expected. We got some aqua. We also have some trapeche looking aqua. It is, yeah. So this aquamarine comes from Pakistan and it is a beautiful, beautiful hexagonal prism. It is wonderfully clean on the inside as uh, aquamarine kind of tends to be often. And it comes to a lovely termination of all of its six sides. Aquamarine or beryl is part of the hexagonal crystal system, mm -hmm. which that crystal you and this it. slice are great representations. The cause of color in aquamarine is really fun. So the more iron two, the more blue. And the fun thing about aquamarine is, or barrel generally, is the balance between blue barrel, which is aquamarine, yeah. green barrel, emerald, and heliodor is all just like Oof. a combination. Heliodor is yellow barrel. It's all like a proportions game. Yeah, and it's like a recipe with varying ratios. Yes, yeah, so iron three causes yellow. Mm -hmm. And so when there's, for example, a lot of iron two and a little bit of iron three, you're gonna have by and large a blue one. If it's more even, what do blue and yellow make? Green. Green, so you're gonna have like a greener barrel. When you have chromium added in there in a certain saturation, you have emerald. There's more ferrous iron or iron two, mm -hmm. but there's also probably ferric iron in there as well. Typically, when you think of trapeche, you think of trapeche emeralds, which right. is another variety of barrel. But this one is fun because it's a trapeche-like or blue trapeche. I think the history of the trapeche phenomenon is really interesting because it was first described in like the 1800s in emerald. And then it wasn't until a hundred years later was it discovered and confirmed in topaz and tourmaline and rubies and aquamarine. All right. Another box. Ooh, look at that. Extraordinary. And we've even got a little geode. Yeah. Often they have amethyst inside. Yes, so it's, it's, it's often, fun trying to guess what's yes, going to be on the inside. Yes, you never know. Sometimes it's amethyst, sometimes it's smoky. Amethyst is the purple variety of quartz colored by iron. Iron three plus, ferric iron. So quartz is a uh, silicon dioxide. You can see that there are different amounts of iron that cause different saturations of purple. Here we have this really nice lilac purple. It kind of transitions into this gradation of a light to dark purple, and then this mm -hmm. is a pretty dark purple piece. That's a really dark purple piece, yeah. So amethyst used to be really valued. Mm -hmm. As it became more prominent, there are huge finds in Brazil and other places, its value decreased because it was such a common gemstone. Amethyst quartz gets its color mostly from iron. It can be from manganese as well. And amethyst is often treated. It's also okay. often not treated. So it's important to, to know when you're buying whether or not it is treated, but Treatment, specifically irradiation, can cause a deeper purple. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for a closer look? I am, yeah. I would like to take a look at the trapeche. Well, I think the uh, internal features of it are really striking. Yeah, that's a fun one. I'm gonna choose the peridot. Like I said, peridot is one of my favorite gems to test. I love the story of peridot. The color is really fun, so take a closer look.
Bob, love talking about iron with you. Let us yeah, know in the comments good. if you want more cause of color episodes. Yeah, there are definitely a ton of different causes to uh, to talk about. Yeah. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.